What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the Week 5 CWL invite matchup Forbidden versus WHF, and Forbidden getting the narrowest of narrow victories. 116 to 116 was the final winning by less than a third of a percent. I do want to give a big shout out to everybody that came through for the live stream. Uh, if you guys missed that, I will have that link down in the description. Uh, you, you literally have to see the live stream. It was so intense, literally. And I mean, guys, literally it came down to the last attack. I mean, we're talking a buzzer beater win at the very end, completely insane. We'll go ahead and take a look at the winning attack towards the end of the video. We'll take a look at each side of the map and wait until you guys see the stats to this war. I mean, pretty much even throughout, from the beginning, this war was neck and neck, and it stayed that way until the very end. The last attack uh, went in. I think there was probably 20 seconds left before the war ended, before that last final attack went in. But we'll go ahead and check out this one Tao Nine attack, as you guys already know, and we'll go ahead and throw the stats up on the screen. Uh, but we have Dulce going to be taking on this base with a classic Sui here, Lalo, and doing it fresh too. All right, guys, checking out Forbidden stats first. I mean, it's like I said, it's week after week, you guys. I mean, these are not flukes. This is the clan. Look at this. 3 11 11 three stars, perfect on dips, yet again, five weeks in a row, 15 10 v 10 three stars, and the Talho 9's hitting at a very impressive 75% hit rate, providing quite a few scouts on these 10s. And being a heavy breakdown that it was, every single scout mattered uh, since it was a 7 21 12 breakdown only 12 town lines on the map all right guys whf stats next uh and like i said the stats are very very similar 3 11 v 11 three stars they also went perfect on dips had 12 10 v 10s and an 80 percent town hall nine hit rate uh so although forbidden had three more 10 v 10s we did have a few more 11 v 11 attempts we both had the 3 11 v 11 three stars we had the six perfect dips WHF with the nine, but that is how each clan was able to put up 116 stars. Uh, I mean, very, very impressive to both clans, uh, the numbers that both these clans were able to put up. Um, you could not ask, honestly guys, just check out the stream. You cannot ask for a better war, whether people are fans of these clans or not, everyone was saying how intense and just how incredible this world this these wars like this ending like this are the reason why we play at this top-notch level at this competitive level so big shout out to whf to whf even a bigger shout out to forbidden for getting the victory but as you guys know we have got to get into some of the heavy hitter action uh first up First on the list is none other than OBL and doing it. I mean, I almost want you guys just to watch this attack without me even talking in the background. The, the Lalo on this, and also what made this attack special is, I if I'm not mistaken, this was the first 10v10. It might have been the second, uh, but it was either the first or the second 10v10 of the war uh, coming probably within the first hour, maybe hour and a half of when the war started. Look at the funnel that he set up with two baby dragons, the four wall breakers setting a perfect funnel for those heroes, even picking up the expo and the enemy queen from over the wall. Just look at that entry. Dropping down three haste. Just what guys, no one does it better than OBL. The best air attackers in the land are in Forbidden. Check this out. Look at how, look at the pathing that he sets up for these loons. I mean, they just sweep through this base, not leaving any defenses up, you know, on, on the back. It's just incredible. The 
just how he can attack like this. It's absolutely insane. Perfect heal spell placement. Uh, the, the double rage, getting that queen kill uh, on the initial entry. And look at the formation of these balloons all collapsing. Even has an un unpopped hound. All kinds of cleanup. And if I'm not mistaken, also, I think those are Town Hall 9 minions. But guys, give it up for OBL coming through week after week after week with these insane Lolos getting it done, taking advantage of that base. And like I said, very early on into war. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and check out um, some ground action. We know Forbidden loves all different forms of Lolo, but they also have some very, very impressive ground attacks as well. So we'll go ahead and check out this attack from Spartacus, just setting up a very simple funnel just using a couple wizards dropping down five valkyries and his heroes there goes the first uh layer of wall breakers drops down the rage sends in the next layer of wall breakers they're going to target that wall opening up that hero compartment where now he can get both heroes down he can take out the enemy cc take out the inferno tower and even take out the expo only bringing one rage for this kill squad leaving four heal spells for the ground portion so Hogs coming in at the top, uh, drops down the majority of the Hogs, but notice he's also saving a few for that Wizard Tower. He goes ahead and drops down the second heal spell. So all Hogs are down on the field right now and started clean up nice and early up there at the top. There goes the third heal spell, covering all those, all those point defenses and even catching the edge of that Wizard Tower. Very, very crucial, these max level Wizard Towers do work on these hogs and the last heal spell clearly that's going to go over the two cannons the tesla and the bomb tower and if you guys look closely somehow some way the queen even ended up surviving uh, he started those hogs nice and early while the kill squad was still doing work uh over there at three o'clock spartacus getting it done beautiful beautiful attack uh, absolutely love the entry on that one. All right, guys. Next up, we have JFM and doing it with the Skelly Donut. But Riggs, what's the Skelly Donut? You are about to find out. There we go. Rage spell down. Six skeleton spells are inside of that core, all under Rage. Notice he's dropping down a couple loons to go ahead and take out that mortar. Uh, but check that out. CC is down. Queen is down, Expo is down, uh, and even both of the air sweepers, you guys. So check this out: Giant down to take the uh, to tank that cannon. Queen in or King in front of the Queen goes and drops down those wall breakers, gets the wall popped, and as he pops the King ability, clears the trash. Queen enters inside that compartment right there, giving her access to two air defenses goes ahead and pops ability and even gets the inferno tower this base already looking wrecked look at that look at the defense pathing around this base clearly these loons are going to be going counterclockwise starting at six o'clock six three and up there at 2 30 hasting in these loons another haste coming in up there at 1 30 and those are those are all the spells right there you guys hound coming in up at 12 dropping on more loons to go ahead and take out that wizard tower minions down uh to help clean up this base i mean made it look so freaking easy jfm wrecking it with the skelly donut setting up a beautiful uh i mean just a beautiful entry on uh doing the the sweet heroes down there to pick up those two ad's uh, incredible, incredible attack. Absolutely love that attack right now. Taking advantage of those bases without the splash inside of that core. All right, guys, next up, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, best of luck, okay? Best of luck to all of the Town Hall 10s out there. I actually feel bad for all the Town Hall 10s out there in invite trying to catch this guy right here who am I talking about? I'm talking about Storm, a.k.a. the guy on the leaderboard still in CWL Invite, ranked number one. And this is why, you guys, check this out. Suiciding his queen over there at 9 o'clock. But look at the entry. Check, rewind that while I was talking. The entry, drop it down to king, 
just a few wall breakers and about five bowlers to go ahead and get two layers of walls popped and that raid spell taking out the enemy queen uh taking out uh an air defense and just completely ripping apart this base that mini kill squad getting all the way inside the core uh setting up the show for this lolo right here and of course the enemy cc is also down and you'll see right here dropping on that hay spell covering uh both the archer towers the two teslas and the expo some more loons coming in down here at six o'clock they're gonna all meet up inside that rage spell beautiful split they're gonna one shot that inferno tower one shot the wizard tower and the expo some more hasted loons coming in the timing on this law they i'm telling you guys try it for yourselves they make it look so easy the timing and the spell placement and the loon drops getting it done and those three hay spells pretty much all touching each other, pushing these loons to the last defense that can do anything to them, being uh, that air defense. They one-shot it, uh, nothing but cleanup. Uh, the actual last defense to go down was the cannon. Uh, we have uh, Storm completely wrecking it. Rank number one, the best air attackers in the land in Forbidden, you guys, and that is why right there. Next up, we have Cherry going to be taking on this base. Uh, a similar attack to what we saw uh, with Spartacus uh, kind of doing this um, Vaho. The difference is, though, uh, Cherry's bringing a maxed Golem. So check this out. Look at the rock skips off of the mines. Uh, they go ahead and take out each Archer Tower. So Funnel has already been set. He's going to go ahead and drop down Queen and King followed up by those wall breakers and under rage they're also going to get that the, the the two layer walls uh pop goes ahead even uses a heal spell something we do not see a lot at town hall 10 in all honesty is is bringing that heal spell for the kill squad but look at what he was able to get he was able to completely break that defensive ring and his queen was able to take out both of the expos uh and his kill squad those valves actually ended up uh um, his kill spell actually broke through three layers of walls. Check that out, you guys. But Hogs coming in over here on the right-hand side of the map um, and has one more uh, heal spell left to deploy. So check this out, you guys. Uh, bringing down a few more Hogs over there on that Tesla. Just trying to keep all these Hogs nice and tight. When he pops Queen ability, takes out the Expo and the Bomb Tower. Uh, Queen is still up as the Hogs make their way. Has about 700 Hogs left up, you guys. Uh, and nothing but cleanup. And as always, getting that cleanup down nice and early. Even has a couple Archers uh, helping with cleanup over there on the right-hand side. Getting it done completely wrecking that base uh right there you guys but that is going to do it for the 10v10 three stars uh, like i said in the beginning of the video we had 15 um but yeah huge shout out to all of the town hall 10s picking up those triples uh cannot ask for better town hall 10s in any you know you just can't ask for better town hall 10s um, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the picks for the 10v10 three stars. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and check out the three 11v11 triples before we go ahead and wrap this video up, you guys. This one coming from Edofito93, AKA Mass, doing an epic queen charge, uh, hog attack, also known as Queen Ho. Uh, goes ahead and, look at that, goes ahead and pops ability, takes out the Inferno Tower before he even drops down the healers. Healers down, He's also he also chose to do this charge with the Grand Warden. He is gonna be having a couple raid spells for this charge right here. Um, and he just set the funnel, very, very simple funnel, just using uh, a couple bowlers uh, to kind of take out um, two trash buildings uh, just with one bowler. Uh, so very, very nicely done there. Jump spell down, leading everything. If you guys look closely, that jump spell does open up that Eagle Artillery compartment. And check this out. Bomb Tower versus Hog. Hog ends up winning. Um, so beautiful execution on there. No point defenses were even able to target that Hog. That's why that one, that one and only Hog was able to take out that Bomb Tower. Absolutely crucial uh, on a ground attack, especially these max level Bomb Towers do freaking work. So yeah, another Rage Spell down. 
Uh, charge still going strong and still has the warren ability as well. Hogs coming in up here at the top. And he also has a small group coming in over here at 3 o'clock where he had the CC Hogs. Uh, another heal spell down. Has one more heal spell to go. And you guys can probably figure out by now where Mask is going to be placing this heal spell. Um, just has a few point defenses left and he has two wizard towers. He did go ahead and pop that Grand Warden ability as Queen was taking quite a bit of quite a bit of damage. Even brought a couple balloons as uh, the Archer Tower is being tanked by those hogs under the heal spell. Uh, goes ahead and takes out that cannon. And if you guys look closely, the Wizard Tower hitting the balloons instead of his group of hogs as his heal spell was not quite uh, able you know, to make it far enough over that Wizard Tower. Just beautifully executed mask, getting it done. Another 11v11 triple in invite for mask. Um, absolutely love that one. Doing it with Queen Ho too. Uh, beautiful, beautiful attack. So we'll go ahead and check out another hog attack before we get into the attack that won Forbidden the War. So this one is coming from Bridgetown, aka Tom, uh, where he's also going to be doing a hog attack. This isn't going to be a queen ho. Uh, this is he is going to be using a kill squad on this base, um, but just like you would on uh, a, a town hall nine or even a town hall ten, using that kill squad to break the defensive ring, uh, so your hogs stay nice and tight. Uh, pathing through the base, uh, which is exactly what he's going to be doing on this one. And also taking advantage of that Grand Warden's um, range, just taking out the trash buildings, even taking out that mortar uh, as he's going to go ahead and get this wall popped right here. Uh, raid spell down as he does have the King and the Bowlers making their way through this base. Goes ahead and pops the Grand Warden ability. They're going to get the Bomb Tower, the enemy CC. They're going to go ahead and pick up uh, I believe he gets two Expos on this entry and still has Queen ability as well. And like we saw in some of the Town Hall 10 attacks, uh, starting those hogs while the kill squad is still up. There goes that Queen ability. And yes, he was able to pick up both of those Expos on that entry. Hogs will be pathing uh, clockwise around this base, uh, setting in his CC hogs over here uh, at about 4 o'clock as they go ahead and target the enemy uh, Grand Warden. Heal spell down, and he still has one more heal spell uh, left to deploy. This one gets very, very close. Um, wait till you guys see how this one ends. But check this out. Does still have, uh, or he does uh, have cleanup starting nice and early up there at the top, especially on these 11s. Uh, do not want to get that time fail, so starting that cleanup nice and early. Uh, even has a bowler helping out with those wizards. But last heal spell is down, but we do have that wizard tower that's right behind uh, that inferno tower. But check out this clutch Grand Warden actually doing something with his life, uh, helping to take out that inferno tower. Uh, but check this out. The hogs were able to get through... Uh, that wizard tower, uh, but quite a few ground skellies still up. They actually end up taking out all the hogs. Grand Warden finishing off the rest of those ground skellies, cleaning up that base. Tom completely wrecking it. Huge shout out to him. All right, you guys, the moment you have all been waiting for in this war recap. This is the attack that won the war. The score was... 116 to 115 in favor of WHF. They were leading by one star. We had used 79 out of 80 attacks. This was the last attack that Forbidden had to use. This attack right here. So we're going to go ahead and check out and give mad love mad love to Dauphine for getting it done. And for all you guys out there talking about how useless uh, how useless the P.E.K.K.A. is using a P.E.K.K.A. in this attack strategy doing that classic queen walk bitch attack that we're seeing time and time again on these anti three star layouts but just I mean the cherry on top to this one was using that P.E.K.K.A. it is absolutely not useless doing work in this kill squad look at look at the look at the value that he's getting out of these troops and out of these spells inside 
of this core. One Inferno Tower is already down. He does still have one more left up uh, just behind uh, those two Teslas and that Expo right there. Goes in and drops down that Raid spell. And look at these healers uh, not only helping to heal the Queen, but also healing up these bowlers as they're making their way through the core. The most important thing on this attack right here is look at the flank down there at the bottom. Uh, just a couple point defenses left. You can see uh, all those bowlers and those witches go ahead and one shot that archer tower. Uh, but the fact that Dauphine still has his Archer Queen ability and looking at what's left, it's all about how this Queen is going to path through this base if she goes around or if she goes ahead and takes that long channel where she can take out that Expo. But just look at all of the troops still left up. Drops down that Giant just to help a little bit with the tanking on that cannon. But this was the moment right about now where everybody realized this is it. This is going to be a triple and forbidden going to uh, get this victory, uh, clinch this win, and remain undefeated in CWL Invite Season 4, which is exactly what they did, and even swagging that Archer Queen ability. Uh, huge love, uh, huge shout out to Dauphine. You, I mean... I'm sure you guys understand by now, this was a must three star in order for Forbidden to get the win. So definitely soak up this moment, uh, Dauphine, getting that three star, getting the victory, ending on a tie 116 to 116, Forbidden getting the victory on Toll Destruction because of that attack right there. Uh, but of course it goes with all the planning. All the, all the fails, all the successful attacks, uh, Forbidden showing why they are in invite, still undefeated, one of two clans uh, that are still undefeated in invite. Uh, huge shout out to all of you guys uh, watching this video uh, and obviously supporting the channel. Big shout to Forbidden, big shout to WHF. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys liked the video, if you did, uh, make sure you guys uh, hit that like button, comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Hashtag fear for b As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.